I'm on my period. And he's like, oh, I'll wear a condom. Like, it's nothing. And she's not letting on that anything's happened. And and it's just so, oh. Yeah, that these guy. Li- these little things, I, I, I love these little touches, you know, because I'd forgotten so much of the movie since the last time I watched it. And I was like, where is this? Where is this going? And it's like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. And then later on, he's like, well, that was a great idea for you to act dead. Like, I didn't know if that was a joke or not. Like, I don't know if she was not into it or if that was her idea, but he didn't care. And that's a really sudden segue. It sort of <laughs> caught, it's it sort of caught me out. I forget what the scene prior to that one was, but they jump, just like jump into the sex scene. And I'm like, who, who is the guy? Oh, okay. It's, it's, uh, it's Robert. And, and she is literally like laying there, like, you know, yeah. un- unfeeling or just like kind of comatose or whatever. It's very... Then he just yeah. throws a comment out there and you're like, what is happening? And again, it's like you don't... Like you said, Mark, you don't really know if she's faking it or if she's just... Is she processing something mm-hmm. through through being with him? Is she, is her mind like just somewhere else? Which, you know, I, I believe all of those things possibly or that she was just putting on a ruse. I don't know. What do you think about Ralph? <laughs> i'm just going questions because i like these answers you're giving me uh he's he, he's you know again it's like these characters are more complex than they initially seem but i i love when she when l returns to her mom's apartment and he's given her a but it, it's <laughs> the way it's shot is hilarious because she just walks in the door because she has a key and then you see him briefly and he's buck naked in the other room and then he just goes off into the other room to get clothes on and he's already moved on to some young thing who just walks out oblivious and completely naked yeah you know you know i just i just he's a bit of a yeah he's he's kind of a a gold digging jerk but i feel like l is kind of she's kind of in the right you know i don't i don't blame her for treating him like kind of like this is you know this is this is what you are and you're kind of using my mother for this, but, you know, I own the apartment and I'm going to sell the apartment. So, you know, hit the road, man. Yeah. Because he's squatting, essentially. Pretty much. He's taking advantage of the situation. Yeah. Now, they kind of talk about how she doesn't want to call the police because of her history with the police. That's Mm -hmm. the one thing that I feel like this movie tells you. Mm -hmm. Now, I know at the end, when she is attacked and she is brutalized and it's traumatic... Mm-hmm. This detective is instead of saying, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Yeah." So, were you guys share coffee or share uh, lawn borrow lawnmower neighbors? Like he wasn't. Uh-huh. He was kind of. So maybe those are the questions she got from cops in the mm-hmm. past. And once mm-hmm. they learn who she is, so she didn't want to deal with them. I mean, did you see any anything weird about his questions at the end? You know, that's a good observation, Mark. Uh, I I I didn't pick up on that, but that kind of uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think. I was so thankful that that didn't that wasn't dragged out Um, because I for a second I was like, okay, so is there going to be a whole big wrap up with the police? But I was glad that there wasn't. Yeah. You know, thinking about this, I think about the uh, gap of when Elle was age 10 to whatever age she is when we meet her in the movie. What was her life like building her life up from being this hugely public figure with this hugely traumatic childhood like what did she have to go through to get to the point of power that she was in i wonder you know i'm just kind of fascinated by that thick skin i mean i guess so because that lady dumps a tray of food on her lap in the beginning and she kind of just like shrugs it off yeah like like a lot like a lot of other stuff yeah she uh 39 years had gone by okay and that was interesting like so 39 years i thought that was Mm -hmm. interesting yeah, because I'm like, you'd think there'd be more of the, uh, you know, I, I guess I, I keep going back to the lesser Hollywood version of this where, okay, she's working at this video game company and everybody is like giving each other shifty stares because, oh, you know what happened to her, right? You know, mm-hmm. she, she's she got that trauma. Oh, you don't know what to expect from old L. So, yeah, I know. And, I, and, I, and I'm glad that wasn't a thing, you know, that again, it's Verhoeven uh, taking the, uh, unconventional route with things which he's very good at so so you're there's somebody right and they are going to go to a island desert island and you have (laughs) to give them three paul verhoeven movies which ones would you do it oh man um uh definitely this one i think it's 
it's weird because I think for as much praise as it's got, praise as it's gotten, I feel like it is a bit underrated in his filmography. Um, I think this is a fantastic movie. Uh, RoboCop for sure. That movie never gets old. Um, shoot. Um, you know what? I'd probably go with Starship Troopers. That would be my three. So Starship Troopers, RoboCop, and L. Yep, that's mine. What about you? Probably uh, Turkish Delight. No, I'm joking. <laughs> the, the the fourth man. Yeah. Oh, Flesh and Blood with Rucker Hauer and Jennifer Jason Lee. I, oh, I still still need to see that one. Yeah. Verhoeven said that Jennifer Jason Lee could have done this role. He said that. Ah. Uh, he said because she's fearless. Yeah, she is. You know, and. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Jason Lee is great. I, I like her a lot. All right. So I'm looking through this. No hollow man. All right. Let's <laughs> see. You got the fourth man. You got flesh and blood. You got Turkish delight. <laughs> I'm going to give him RoboCop. Them. If no, all right, whoever it is, I'll give. Cause basic instinct. Once you're over, you know who the killer is. Right. And showgirls. Mm-hmm. I mean, even when you get showgirls, why it was made, do you really want to watch it that much? <laughs> you know mark true confessions i have not seen that movie oh man it's all right so cable guy is bleak and dark but showgirls mm-hmm. like so people always say they turn it up to 11 showgirls has turned up to 48 oh wow okay the performances are in the dialogue is just it's controlled by him and maybe he he's like maybe i missed the point by going so big <laughs> but you just have to when you watch it you just got to know they did this this was a choice. These actors are doing what he wanted. Mm-hmm. Well, so, do, you, do, you, do you feel that that film is how he intended it to be? Yes, with, I do. With the, I with really the, do. Okay, so so what's on there is because he determined it to be so. Okay, all right. Now, now here's the deal. So I'm going to say RoboCop, Starship Troopers, Total Recall. But if you look oh. at his run, he made RoboCop, huge success. Yeah. Total Recall, blockbuster. Yep. Basic Instinct, blockbuster. Oh, yeah. His next film was Showgirls. Mm. So he had all of the power in the world. Yeah. He he was John Travolta when he made Battlefield Earth, being able to make that movie. <laughs> Hubris, like, yeah. Yeah, and so this wasn't maybe after Starship Troopers. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like, it, yeah. yeah. Like, he, he had power, a mm-hmm. lot of power. He had his cred from Europe, then his cred from America. Yep. So... He had absolute control of this movie. I think he just missed. Mm-hmm. With like he he swung a massive like he tried to swing for a home run and he missed the ball like the ball, but it's still mm-hmm. fun to watch. It's better to watch than a Hollow Man. It's better okay. to watch than any boring blockbuster because it's yeah you know I I, I like movies like The Happening. I like or Lady in the Water when people mm-hmm. are at the height of their powers and they just freaking swing, man. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And the results are these movies. Like I, I love it. I think it's I, I love when that happens. So yeah, I mean I, I think you should check it out, but just know that it's 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 camp on camp on camp. No, I mean I really want to check out more of his stuff and even his earlier stuff that you were mentioning, which I haven't seen. It's like I just want to get more of a fuller picture of the guy. And you know, Mark, quick observation. Uh, we did the show on House That Jack Built, mm-hmm. and, you know, I think, uh, is Von Trier Dutch as well? Ooh, that's a good question. Lars Von Trier? I think I might be getting that wrong. I just but... I, t- I typed in Dutch. Okay. But no, Danish. Danish, okay. And, and Verhoeven is Dutch. Something that I think is interesting and maybe endemic of those two, these two filmmakers is the fact that, you know, we've been talking about how L is just very unconventional, like how RoboCop or Basic Instinct is very unconventional for what it is. I think guys like Verhoeven, guys like Von Trier kind of have a more interesting perception of when they're making films in America, the American sensibility than it would be if an American director made a movie about America. Yeah. Cause I, cause I think they, I think they extract stuff from their kind of a uh, foreigner outside perspective. And it's like stuff that might not occur to us per se. And they kind of bring it to the fore in a very interesting, unconventional way. So I just kind of wanted to say that cause that's been on my mind for a while. Well, that's a great point. Yeah. Thank you, you. Probably, you said some, some of the biggest words that have ever been said on MFF history. <laughs> 
I do that. hope I do hope people watch L. I, I, that's that's my hope. I, I, it's just a wonderful film, and I know that we haven't even begun to talk about it. But I just I don't know. I, mean, I just don't don't read the reviews for it, man. I feel like the ones that are super positive, they're still saying how like bad of a character she is. It's just it's there, there's like antiquated in the appreciation, but then uh, I think there's some yeah. really good ones. It's a very I don't know. It's a masterful film. I think it's worth watching. It is a film. If you look at oh. most lists of the best movies of the 2010s, it's on there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, des- I mean, deservedly so. Yeah. She was nominated for a reason. It's an excellent film. It doesn't go where you want. It's a marketer's mm-hmm. nightmare, at least in the United States. Oh, yeah. Johnny yeah. Num. You're a marketer for Johnny Num's marketing and tacos. <laughs> and you are given this movie to market mm-hmm. in the United States. Not in Europe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you market L? Are we looking at it in terms of what would be the most accurate representation of the film? Or are we looking for You're, a way You to... want that cheddar. Are, okay, so we're looking for a way to make money off of this movie. Johnny Num would... needs money for his taco shops. I would... Uh, time to make the chimichangas. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, would, I would seriously go for kind of... Uh, you know what they did with the uh, kind of the Grindhouse poster when that came out? How it was kind of like you know it was like the double feature with Rose McGowan and Death Proof, yeah. and you know I would I would go for some kind of sort of gritty kind of paint maybe painted poster art kind of with some kind of severe I don't know some severe maybe schemes going on color wise or design wise and so just sort of bring an element of kind of danger to it maybe just like a cloud of darkness but emerging from that darkness is maybe the silhouette of isabel huper's face kind of so there's this total abject what is this you know okay her name is l but what does that mean you know and there's trying to think of a tagline for it um this summer (laughs) she rises like a phoenix (laughs) or you know what you know, you know what? Maybe I would do something with just the cat. Okay, I would do the cat just looking impassively directly at whoever's looking at the poster, and yeah. that's it. L, it's a movie about a cat, and you come in and you get something totally different. You know what I would do? Yeah. I would take the Rambo 3 poster and put <laughs> her head on Sylvester Stallone's body. <laughs> L. <laughs> this summer... Oh, She's man. gonna get revenge. Oh yeah. Oh I would, yeah. I would just show clips of her smashing windows. So where she smashes the window, where she's shooting the gun. Mm-hmm. Let's see, where she's punching people. You have to have you have to have the guy with the really deep voice doing the, the voiceover. So she's crushing the car, right? She, she's crushing the car. This she's summer. shooting the gun. <laughs> she's swinging the axe. It's Isabel Hubert. L. Car accidents. Guns. Knives. Alcohol. You will know Sex. her name yeah. this summer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even her name is L, which is funny. Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Yeah, I, I love it. You will know her name. <laughs> That's actually stolen from the uh, Carrie remake, I gotta be honest. The Oh, wow. The legend of the Phoenix came from this movie. <laughs> and actually, you'd have, like, cutaways to the cat, like, sort of turning its head or chewing on the bird to make a little ominous atmosphere. Oh, I would, no, I'd have, yeah, oh gosh, I love that. Eating the bird. Quick, quick cuts, quick cuts. I would yeah. have her fixing the, remember when the shutters are flying open? I'd do that. Oh, yeah, that's Some great. of the punching, some of the yelling at the people. Mm-hmm. Um, the smack at the end, the bonk on the head. <laughs> Let's see. Just every like, uh, I would do that. Some of the video game, and I would, one... I would have yeah. <laughs> rolling by Limp Brisket. Oh she, yeah, she's just oh, yeah. gotta keep rolling, rolling. <laughs> this summer, Isabelle Hubert is no longer rolling with the punches. <laughs> she's gonna punch back. <laughs> L summer twenty twenty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I, I, could do just, this, I could do this all night, Mark. We just yeah. sold this movie. I hope more people people buy this movie. It's out there. 